Welcome back to No BSTS Series 2, Episode 5. We're taking a look at the proxy and flyweight patterns in our continuing look at all of the design patterns in the original design patterns book and how they're implemented in TypeScript. And of course, all of this is connected to the No BSTS The Book, which is on sale now. And every time a new one of these videos comes out, a new chapter in the book also comes out and you get that as a subscription model, but you only pay just the once. All right, so let's start out over on VS Code and take a look at the architecture of these two patterns and how they're related. So the proxy pattern looks like this. You've got a consumer, they want some data, but in between the two, we put a proxy object and that proxy object watches all of the gets and sets and any calls. And maybe there's a subscription function on those or something like that. It's just a way to kind of shield some data and manage all of the interactions with that data. And on the front end, you might use it for doing something like MobX. And on the back end, you might do something like wrapping all your DTOs in an automatic logging proxy. So Flyweight is pretty related to this. So the consumer thinks that there's this resource, but the resource is actually not materialized yet, right? And they're only, it only gets materialized when they want to access it. And so this is actually the first one that we're going to look at. And we will start by creating a directory called Flyweight. And I'll bring up the console and into there we'll create a project. So I'll go into Flyweight, I'll do yarn init dash Y and then yarn add TypeScript and TS node in development mode. So we are going to be experimenting in this case with calling an HTTP service. So I'm going to yarn add node fetch. All right, let's open this up, see what we got. All right, looks good, cool. So what are we going to do with this thing? Well, we're going to flyweight this Pokemon API. So here's the idea. We have the base Pokemon API that gives us a list of all of these Pokemon and their Pokemon URLs that give us more detail. And then only when you request, for example, this Venusaur data, do you get that kind of heavyweight blob of all that additional information. So let's go over and start building out our little flyweight application. I'm gonna create a new file called index.ts. And I'm gonna bring in fetch from node fetch. And then I'm also gonna bring in the definition of this particular output, which is right here. So we initially have this Pokemon list, and then we're also gonna go and get that species and the name and the URL from the drill down URL. All right, so we're going to be using async await. So the first thing we need to do is create an async function at the root level here because not all versions of node have a top level async await. And the next thing we're going to do is just use that fetch to go and get the list of Pokemon. So let's go and console log this out to see if we can get that list of Pokemon. All right, looks like it's pretty good. Okay, we got our count, we got our next, and we've got all of our results. So the next thing we wanna do is create an object that has a relationship between all of the Pokemon names and their URLs. So what we do is we reduce the results, and the results in this case are right here. So this is that array. And then we go through and get the name and the URL off of each one. And so now we're gonna have a list between say Venusaur and the URL that we want for Venusaur. So let's go and console log that out to see what that looks like. Cool, all right, so now Pidgeotto is on this particular URL, awesome, okay. So, so the next thing I wanna do is create a make flyweights URL function. And what this is one is gonna do is again, take this map of names to URLs and then create an object for us. And then only when you request a, like a Venusaur, is it actually going to make the request and get the data back. So initially that is gonna be a very lightweight object and it only gets populated with data when you actually request the data that you need. So if you've got a system where you've got a huge amount of data, tens of thousands of records, but you know that you're only going to be using just a small portion of those, this is actually a really good pattern for that. So let's start off by building out the signature of our make flyweights URL. It's going to take a map of those URLs that go from string to string, and then it's gonna take return type as a generic. So next thing we wanna do is create that object that we're going to proxy. And then we're gonna return a new proxy around that my object. So what is this? So, so what is this? Well, proxy is actually built into JavaScript. It's really cool. So you can actually wrap any object and then you'll be able to 
camp on set and get and call and put in your essentially your own code anytime any of those requests get made. So in this case, we just want to camp on get. So target in this case is this, and then name is the property. So if I request Venusaur, the name would be Venusaur. And then we're going to do a console log out there. And let's just do that for the moment. So instead of this console, I'm going to go create a lookup. And I'm going to do make flyweights on our list of URLs. And what do we want as a return type? Well, we want to put the Pokemon. And we're just going to do data equals lookup dot Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. Cool, right? So that's going to request Bulbasaur off that object. So let's see what happens then. All right, nice. So it's going to want to go and fetch Bulbasaur. So it actually, if you look back over at this code, right? So we this get got run, and then we got that name, and then we know from our URLs that this name matches that name. So it's going to try and fetch Bulbasaur from this URL. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now we're going to do the lazy part of it. We're going to say, okay, so if we don't have that already, then we're going to go and set that value in ourselves to our fetch. And we're going to get back from that fetch the JSON, and that's going to become our new value. And then we're going to return that. Now that's a promise, right? So this fetch hasn't been resolved yet. So this Bulbasaur is actually going to return a promise. So let's go back here to this, and we'll say await, and then we will console log out the species that we got back. So we don't want the whole thing. It's, it's monstrous. So let's run this again. Very cool, Bulbasaur. And let's try it out with, uh, say, you know, Venusaur. And we'll see how we go. Looks good. Nice. Very cool. All right. Awesome. So that's a flyweight pattern for you. And it's really good when you have heavyweight resources that you may or may not need. And so what you can do is you can basically just camp on the request and only get those pieces of data when you actually need them. So now let's try out building a publish and subscribe mechanism using the proxy pattern. I'm going to create another new directory and I'm going to call this simple. And we will go in there. So CD back one directory and into simple and then yarn init dash Y set up our project and then add again, TypeScript and TS node. Now let's take a look in there and see if we're good. Yep, we're good. Okay, let's go create a new file index.ts. And so the first thing we're going to do in this is create a pub sub mechanism. So I'm going to create a function called create subscribable. And it's going to create an object that you can subscribe to and publish messages into. And of course, other subscribers will get those messages once you publish them. So let's say we're going to have a list of subscribers and it's going to be a set. So that set is going to be a set of subscribed functions and that take that message type and don't, re don't return anything, just return void, and we'll initialize that to be a new set. Now, the reason I'm using a set as opposed to an array is that the great thing about a set is you can only add the same thing once, and so if you try to subscribe multiple times, you're just gonna be subscribed to once. All right, now we're gonna return an object out of this, and of course, the first thing we need is a subscribe method. So we've got our subscribe method where we take that callback. Again, that's exactly that, that type of message type to void, and then we add that callback to our list of subscribers using add, which is what you do with set. And then we return an unsubscribe function. So the subscribe method returns a function. And when you call that function, it deletes you from that list of subscribers. It's a really nice way to manage subscribing and unsubscribing a lot easier than having like an unsubscribe method because you also have this have the same function and it just gets to be a hassle. And then publish is super, super easy. Basically, it just takes a message of that message type and just boom, fires it out to all of the different subscribers. So what are we going to do with this thing? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a mechanism that allows us to subscribe to any object. So you give it an object and it returns a proxy to you. And that object has on it an additional subscribe method. Hopefully your original object doesn't have a subscribe method on it. Uh, and then you can then subscribe to that object. And any time that you set that object, you, you will get called back with information about what's actually happened. 
So the first thing we're going to do is define some types. And we're going to define that we have an observable, which is going to take an initial type, which would be the type of that object that we're passing in to create the observable. And then it's going to and on to that the subscribe method. And that subscribe method is going to exactly match this subscribe method up here, except that in this case, it's going to take the data that it's going to take is an observable message. So it's going to basically say, OK, so what changed was this target. And the thing that changed was this property. So it's going to tell you that when I go and set this value on this object, this particular that key changed. All right, so let's start building our create observables function. And so what this does is take some data again with that data type and it returns an observable with that data type. Of course, the red squigglies at this point mean that we actually haven't done that yet. So we need to go do that. So we're going to create our subscribers by using create subscribable like we did above. And we give it that observable message data type. So that's what it's going to send when it publishes a new message. And then it's going to return a new proxy. And that new proxy is going to have everything that was in the original object. So it's going to have all the data, but it's also going to have a subscribe method, which is going to be subscribers dot subscribe. Now there is a gotcha here. We do have actually have to coerce this and then we need to add on some event listeners. So in this case, the event that we're looking for is the set and set works a lot like get. It takes the target, it takes the property and it takes the new value as you'd expect, right? So you're setting something you are taking, you're setting a particular value, Venus or whatever to a particular value. And there you go. And then you know, say yes, return true. You can return false if you want, if you haven't didn't set it. But we actually have to do that set. So in order to do that, we use this reflect.set. And this is built into Node and JavaScript. It's the way to go and actually set this value in yourself. And then from there, we need to publish out that we've done that. So we use subscribers again, and we publish. And we give it that target and that property. And again, we need to do a little bit of coercion, but that's OK. And I think we're good. So let's try this out. So we're going to go and create a message. And this message is going to have a message type where it's got message one and message two and their strings. And we're going to start off with hello and everyone. And then we're going to wrap that in a proxy. So I'm going to say create observable and I'm going to give it that target. And then I'm going to subscribe to it. I'm going to say proxy dot subscribe. And I'm just going to send it console log. So anytime that anything gets set, fire it off to console log. And then I'll just set a value. So property message one equals foo. And here we go. Let... Okay, there you go. So it's giving back that the target is us, right? So in that case, it's message one. And the value's already been set. And then the thing that changed was message one. So if I go back over here, and now I set message two to be something else. and I run this again, we'll get multiple notifications. And every time something changes, we'll get a notification on it. So now to the consumer here, assuming that you didn't know that this was a proxy, right? It's just an object to you. And when you set something on it, you don't know if somebody's listening or not. It just happens that somebody could be listening to the messages coming off of this. All right, so let's actually try this out. So I'm going to try this out in the context of a create react app. So let's go back up one level and then I'm going to do yarn create react app. And I'm going to say simple state manager. So we're going to build basically a mob X out of this. And I'm going to use for that the template, which is TypeScript. All right, welcome back to it. That only took five hours. So let's do simple state manager and then yarn start. And we'll go into localhost 3000 and then, and there you go, as you'd expect. Okay, cool. So let's go over in our app. So the first thing I want to do is grab out all of this observable code. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go over into our files and then go to simple state manager source. And I'm going to create a new file in here called use observable. And I'm going to bring in all of this and then I'm going to export out these functions, export that and export create observable. But I also want to create a use observable. So the idea here is that you're going to have create observable, which you're going to use to create a global piece of data that you can observe. And then you're going to have use observable, which you can then point at that piece of 
global observable data, and it will subscribe to that and will kind of latch it into the React ecosystem by doing the use state that's required once a piece of data changes. So let's put together our use observable. So it's going to take the observable as the only argument. And then I'm going to bring in use state because we're going to need that. And I also need to bring in use effect because I'm going to subscribe to our observable. And now down here, I'm going to go and do something a little weird. I'm going to go create essentially what maps to a version in the state. So it's going to, every time the observable object changes, I'm just going to push that version number by one. And I don't really care what that value is. The value here is that React will then re-render that component. So I'm going to ignore the value part of it and take set version and start off with use state at zero. So start off with the zero version. And then when I use effect, it's going to be a function. It's going to take that observable, which is probably never going to change. And then this function is just going to call observable dot subscribe. And then when that fires, it's just going to do set version to the current version plus one. So basically anytime anything changes on that object, you're just going to get a redraw or a re-render of your component. That's really all that you were doing. And then we're going to turn out of this the observable as that data type. Cool. Okay, let's go over to our app and try this out. So let's get rid of a lot of this stuff. Don't need any of that. Don't need any of this. What we do need, we need from our use observable, which is this create observable and use observable. And then we're going to create some global state using create observable. So that global state is going to have a count in it. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, we're going to do a counter. So we'll then go and create a counter component. We will get the counter by use observable, the global state that we just created, which is an observable. And then we're just going to return, we're going to return a div. And inside that div, we're going to say count equals counter.count. .count. And then we're going to have a button that when you unclicked it, and here's the fun part, we can just say counter.count .count plus equals one. How cool is that? That's a really nice interface for global state. All right, and finally, we'll call this add one. And now we'll use it. Cool. And let's make this a lot bigger. All right. Pretty cool. Okay. So now what happens if we have five of these things? <gasps> awesome. So they are all subscribed to the same global state. And how easy was this to do? So all we're doing is basically creating that proxy object using create observable that creates a global state and it has a publish and subscribe mechanism on it such that whenever any part of it count or anything else changes that publish and subscribe mechanism fires. And then we've got a use observable that subscribes and any time that anything changes on that object, it just has a version of it so that it bump, bumps that version, forces that React re-render, and then we get the effect we want, which is awesome. Okay, very cool. I, I hope you enjoyed this look at the proxy and flyweight design patterns and how they can be used in both Node and also in React. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those down below. The code is, of course, available to you in GitHub. If you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.